Now some days in so we discussed in that there was a population like this so i had x1 x2 all the way up to xn and along with that i had some expectation which was inversely proportional to rank and all that i've done is that i selected some individuals and double arrow means they have been selected multiple times so this selected many times, this selected a few times, the other selected one, and some were not selected, of course. Now what I do is that the selected individuals do mating, and uh, they have been researched on gender, but we'll have a sexual reproduction, two parents, one children, you can do whatever you like. So we'll have a sexual reproduction to parents, one child, without caring about the gender. So the selected individual, so that's x1, two times, x2, three times, x5, x8, two times, x10, one time, x11, two times, and x15, one time. They form random pairs, so these are random pairs. selected individual. Now I'll do mating and mating is the crossover. So now I'll do in a crossover. So let's do crossover of any one as an example. So x2, x10, and let me take in random x2 and x10. I think I took four genes, so let's take four. So that's the first gene, that's the second gene, that's the third gene, that's the fourth gene of the corresponding individual. Uh, crossover is exchange of genes. So there's a one point crossover. So I select in any one point where I will flip the genes. So this becomes parent one. So after this, the genes are flipped. This becomes child one and this becomes child two. And this is, of course, parent one, and this is parent two. So the children turn out to be point one, point eight. So follow this trail, point one minus zero point nine, and follow this trail for child two, zero point eight minus zero uh, point two minus zero point six. Oops. And 0.3. And this one is the one point crossover. So uh, there's another one that say, I mean, so this theory basically says if I only have one point crossover, I'll do two. So let's draw the same thing and instead of one point, let's cross over at two points. So drawing the parents again. So I select two points where I will flip. So let's say this one and this one. So first flip, second flip and the converse so this will be child one and this will be child two so that's parent one and parent two so just follow this lead so it's point one minus zero point two point one and point three point eight minus zero point eight point six and minus zero point nine So 
where this is taken from the second parent and the rest are taken from the first parent. So that's child one and that's child two. Now, why two? So I've given an example of one point crossover. I've taken two point crossover. I can have three point crossover, four point crossover, five point crossover. So let's take a general crossover, infinite points crossover. N point crossover where N could be zero, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. And of course, let's highlight these up so that I can check whether the thing came from the first point or it came in from the second point. So I've highlighted this up. Uh, let's say that I will apply crossover here. I will not apply. I will not apply. I will apply random ups and downs. So this means flip the bits, this means no flip. And the individual comes out to be, so flip 0.8, 0.1, 0 0.1, do not flip, minus 0 0.8, minus 0.2, do not flip, 0 0.6, 0 0.1, and flip, 0 0.3, minus 0 0.9. So if I trace the bits around over here, so this was flipped, this was flipped, uh, that's one. So these come from parent two and these come from parent one and this is of course a child one and child two. And this is a crossover called a scattered crossover. Uh, this is cross. We actually use it in our local signboards as well in the city. X is cross, so that's crossover. So one point crossover, two point crossover, and infinite crossover, scattered crossover. It works both with binary encoding and real encoding. But what is the best one that I will give you, the one that I personally endorse, So let this be parent 1 and let this be parent 2. I need to produce a C1 and C2, child 1 and child 2. So I'll take this thing as a vector. So in some space, this P1 is a vector. And P2 is another vector. So I say the children will be intermediate over here in this line. So randomly this will be child one and this will be child two as vectors. So my formula goes like any point in this line can be called as R1 times parent one plus R2 times parent two. So let this be child one. And let's have only one R, so it's R times parent one plus one minus R times parent two. So if R is one, it's parent one. If R is zero, then it's parent two. Depending on, if R is 0.5, it's parent one plus parent two intermediate here. So this is R is equal to, so this one is R is equal to one. This is R is equal to zero. This is R is equal to 0.25. This is R is equal to 0.5. And C2 is opposite so that the second child is contrasting to the first one as we have been doing. And R is randomly taken from a uniform distribution of 0 and 1. So as an example, let R is equal to 0 0.2. 
So parent one is 0 0.1 minus 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, and parent two is 0 0.8 minus 0 0.2, 0 0.1 minus 0 0.9. So, child 1 is 0 0.2 times parent 1 plus 0.8 times 1 minus r times parent 2, 0 0.8. Similarly, for all the other bits, 0 0.2 times minus 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 times minus 0 0.2 plus and so on and child 2 is opposite 0 0.8 times the first parent plus 0 0.2 times the second 0 0.8 times the first parent plus 0 0.2 times the second plus and so on this one is only for the real encoded and it's called as uh, arithmetic because it, I've done a lot of arithmetics cross over x is cross so this one is what is called as the arithmetic crossover. Uh, just a quick recap. So we had a population, we selected a few individuals, we applied crossovers and we produced children. But from biology, we know whenever crossover happens, there are errors. This is, as of now, ideal crossover. As of now, I've done in an ideal crossover. And because it's an ideal crossover, so I'll have to maybe do something and make it not ideal. So I had two parents over here and I had a P1, P2 and I did a crossover and I applied, I got a C1 and C2. Now I'll take both of them and I'll apply error and that error will be called as mutation. So let me take a child let's say this was C1 and apply a mutation. Now, if it was a binary encoded individual, all I would have done is there's a mutation rate, which is percentage of bits flipped. say 20%. So 20% of this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is sealed. So 20% of 5 is 1. So I just select one bit and I flip it. So that's a bit and I will just flip it to produce the child. So it becomes 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 where this is a bit flipped. I could have flipped two bits if it was longer or the mutation rate was larger, but then I'm dealing with real encoded genetic algorithm. So what I'll do is I literally apply noise. So, Let this individual be X and the child generated from it be Y. So I say Y is equal to C1 plus Gaussian noise. Or I say Y is equal to C1 plus a Gaussian noise with a mean zero and standard deviation of sigma, where this is the mutation rate. Or I say Y 
plus a Gaussian noise of mean zero and standard deviation, whatever, it's actually pretty high. This is my child. So let's say it will, the Gaussians are extremely low mostly. So let's say it becomes minus 0 0.11. Uh, 0 0.805 sometimes it can actually be pretty high and mostly it is low so that's your child after mutation and I take it and I do it with all the individuals which are there in my so that's the way that I apply in an error.